Oh. Hello. Sorry about that. Um, I just wanted to do another video. I said I wasn't going to, but, um, it helps me, so, uh, I figured I'd make it, um, and it might help other people. I wanted to talk about, um, trying to get out of an abusive relationship, especially when there's children involved. I'm not really talking gender oriented because it, it happens to males too and it happens to females. And a lot of people who have never been in that position simply don't understand the dynamics of how hard it is to break free, especially when, if you've never been in a place where you're, you've been mentally or physically abused or, and, and not only that, it, if you're already mentally ill, it, it, it affects somebody who's not mentally ill in a really negative way. And then if you add me mental health on top of it, um, it's extremely difficult for a female or a male to, I mean, it affects everybody in their, their whole way of how they function. Um, and I don't think a lot of people who have not been in abusive relationships don't understand when you try to leave an abusive relationship and you have children, especially even if it's your home or, if, you know, if it's not, there's things that hinder you sometimes, especially if it's your own home. Um, and you have a partner who is emotionally abusing you, which is even worse because physical abuse, you could always call the cops and get a restraining order and, and get them out by other means. But if you have somebody who is financially holding and using the finances as a mean of control, then they also bring up the fact that they're not going to leave because of the fact that they're a resident or a tenant, which means that you have to go and legally evict them. And meanwhile, you're in this toxic environment and you're trying so desperately to figure out how you're going to get you and your children to the other side safely. Um, is a lot harder, I think, than people realize. Um, I had to go through it, and it was <laughs> extremely difficult. And, um, when I did I finally break free, it's not easy. All of a sudden, you have all this responsibility, financially, everything, and it's thrown upon your plate, and... That's really when you need a support team because people don't realize when a woman walks away from an abusive or a man walks away from an abusive situation and they have children, they have to still provide, they still have to keep a roof over their head, they still have to function as a parent while dealing with the mental part that it just happened. Um, because when you're in an abusive relationship, especially when they're mentally abusing you, physically abusing you, degrading you, taking away your self-worth, it affects you in more areas than what you even could possibly imagine. Um, it affects your parenting, it affects your, your, what you like, what you don't like, your, it, it changes and alters you, and when it gets really bad, there's times that your abuser or your partner or the, you know that's abusing you you start hearing <laughs> the manipulation and and the mental abuse in your head and it starts to take over your voice and i don't think people understand the difficulties um of when you finally get the courage to leave a bad situation um an abusive situation um, especially if you don't have a support network. I'm not saying it's impossible. I didn't have much of a support network. Um, when I decided to do it, I had a couple of friends and stuff like that, and I appreciated being able to talk to. But as far as anybody willing to really help me get, like, back on my feet, my head screwed on straight, his voice out of my head, my 
plan on how I was going to provide for the children. Because usually when an abuser does finally leave, like you go through the process of illegally evicting them, because some of them will make you do that. They will put you in a position where a car is broken down, or you're backed up on bills, or you don't understand that the extents of the abuse and the extents of what some of these abusers will do. And I need to just do a shout out to every woman who's ever found the strength to leave. And if you've never been in those shoes, you really have a difficult time as grasping the reality of, goodness, of what is going on. You, you, you don't understand the mental, the psyche, the... It's your own survival mode. You're trying the best you can to provide, to make a plan, to keep your house running and removing this person because this person who is abusing you 9 out of 10 times will try to isolate you from the world. They will try to make it where you are solely dependent on them. So when you try to leave your resources, they already tried to deplete. And then on top of that, a lot of them, these are physical, it, it, it could get dangerous. And, and I suggest in those times, whether it's your house or not, take your kids. And if you have an opportunity, go somewhere. If not, the first time that it gets abusive, call the cops and have them physically removed. Um, but it, it it's, it's a scary situation. And then a lot of women fall back into that situation because the lack of support and that's all they know and then they get scared and then they're afraid they're going to be on the streets and they have these babies to provide for so any woman who's ever gotten out of a, a mentally abusive or physically abusive relationship I applaud you I mean I understand the difficulties there is when it comes to domestic violence and how it contributes directly to how you see yourself and your mental health and your, you know. And, and when you do leave and you reflect back on that time, you may see things that you could have done better. But the first step is to remove the toxic, violent, manipulative, abusive person out of your life for the safety of you and your children. Some people think in a fairy tale world that you can wake up one day and be like, okay, today is going to be the day that he's going to leave. I'm going to make him leave. Now, if you're dealing with somebody who is solely just emotionally abusing you, financially abusing you, trying to control aspects of your, who you talk to, there is no real physical abuse. And I have called the cops in situations like that. And there is no legal ground you have, even if you own your home. So you're forced to have to live with this person until you legally evict them. Um, and I can tell you, I didn't have to go through that process. Thank God, uh, the person I was with just left eventually. Um, but there's a lot of women that have to deal with the whole legality of getting a person out of their house. Now, as I said, I'm, I'm just trying to explain it to you because a lot of people think that, you know, you're in a bad relationship, you can just get out. I mean... And then you have the process of getting out isn't as easy. Once you're out of that situation, it doesn't necessarily mean it's over. A lot of times these people, and I like to say men because generally, it, but it's women too. Men get abused too. I'm not going to exclude the male gender because they're single fathers that have to deal with mental abuse through women and even physical abuse. So this is not a gender topic about females against males. or It's just a domestic violence and mental health topic. But once you get out of that environment, 
especially if you're dealing with somebody who's a little bit narcissistic, controlling, you're free, but you're not free. Um, and, and then that's the step that I think a lot of people don't understand. You're not with the person, but somehow they still control you in different aspects because the woman or the man's healing. And a lot of times I'm going to just say, because I understand more my sex, um, I've talked to a couple other men who's explained their situations and, and you know, it, it's not, I'm not going to get into what's worse or what not, but you have the process, what's going on, you have these children that depend on you, you have your head all screwed up, you desperately need support. First thing I would suggest is getting into therapy. After getting out of an abusive relationship, you need to, if not even before, if you're if you're able to, depending on the person who you're with, it, it, but get into therapy as fast as possible to try to build your support network if you do not have a natural one of friends and family. Because once you leave, it might not end. And that's a reality that you're going to have to face. You're going to have to face that this person is still going to try to control you sometimes from a distance. Sometimes it's with blowing up your phone, making you feel like they miss you, they need you. Um, you'll hear the sweetest nothings, or, you know. Um, and, and then when that doesn't work and you stand your ground and you're adamant, that sweet, kind person who's trying to win you back turns to not so sweet. Then they start verbally attacking you or stalking you or, I mean, there's multiple things and stories of women that I've heard of stories of once they did get out. So that's what I'm saying. You definitely need a support system if you're in that position and once you've gotten out, I would suggest getting into therapy, if not getting into a church, trying to build that support network. If not, you might fall back because you're very vulnerable. And a lot of people don't understand that. They want to sit back and judge women who stay with men who are abusive. or And I, I don't know if it happens as much with men getting judged with staying with women who are abusive. But I know there's a great deal of judgment with women. And... I was there, and it took time, and it was very painful, and it, it was a process that not many people understand, and, and I'm just trying to do this video for women who are in that situation, or women who are coming out of that situation, you know, because I want them to know that what's going on inside of them right now, as far as their, the way they think, the way they feel, like, it's a whole new healing process. Um, and like I said, it, it, it takes a toll. And most people who never went through that have a difficult time understanding. Um, they're like, oh yeah, just we'll take them to a shelter or do this or do that. And it's great for people to throw out their opinions on what they would do if they were in that situation. But that doesn't mean they understand being in that situation because they haven't went through the mental mind games. The, you know, depriving. I mean, some of these people will deprive you of, like, talking to family members. Um, they try to get inside your head and it, it, it's, it's really difficult to put into words the amount of mental mess up it happens when it comes to abuse. So you're not dealing with a rational woman sometimes who is abused. You're dealing with a woman who's been broken and battered and trying to put herself together, figuring out the pieces, finding the strength, coming up with a safe plan, because sometimes it's not always safe and you have to have a safe plan. Um, I do know that if you reach out, there are um, little cards I got back where I was living that gives you emergency contact numbers that helps you set up a safety plan 
or your family to get out of an abusive relationship. So if you're able to, I would say before you even leave, if you're still stuck in that situation, just start trying to build your support network and start coming up with your exit strategy. But people need to realize this doesn't happen overnight. Um, and people have to realize the mental damage and the things that a woman goes through and, and that it can't happen overnight. And I don't know. I, I feel like I'm just rambling on the same thing. Because to me it feels really difficult to explain this to people who have been there because people are so judgmental. And being in a relationship that was abusive and finding my way out of that relationship and going through the process. And, and the thing that bothered me with it is technically I was still in love with this person. And, and that made it so much more difficult and I was so much more vulnerable. Because everything inside me loved this person, but it just wasn't healthy for the children. It wasn't a healthy environment. I wasn't the mom I could be. I wasn't the woman I should be. I wasn't... I was so fixated in the abuse, and, and, and I would hear his words as my own, and my self-esteem was gone. And I can go on and on about what mentally goes through your mind, your anxieties, and then you you start second guessing yourself because a lot of times these men want to destroy your confidence, so then you have to build that back up. So before you judge another woman who is in a a violent or an abusive relationship, maybe you should reach out a helping hand to try to be a part of her support network. Maybe you should wake up and realize that Rome was not built in a day. And that sometimes women need to plan. And it takes, unfortunately, that person still having to be in that environment for you. Legally wise, I mean, I've called the cops to remove a certain person and they would come back the next morning. What can you... And then if you don't have the resources to pay for a motel, you don't have friends or family that you can go stay with, you really have limited options. So I hope if anybody listens to the, the whole duration of this long, long rant, is that before you cast judgment on a parent that is in a relationship that's toxic, you need to try to put yourself in their shoes and you need to understand the mental state in which they're in. Um, and you need to realize that, I mean, even if you want to, there's time, the laws don't even allow you at times if you own your own place to just tell somebody you're abusive, I can't take anymore, you gotta leave today. 